Hey, so today we'll be working on a PS5 motherboard. Uh, this one came in for no power. <clears throat> First thing you want to do when you get a PS5 in for no power is you want to make sure that, that uh, well, what I end up telling the customers, I say, hey, um, this could be either a power supply issue or a board problem. Um, nine times out of 10 for the most part. So first thing you want to do is you want to check that power supply and make sure it's output in 12 volts. That's the first thing you want to do. Okay, cool. Your power supply is output in 12 volts. Now let's take a look at the board, right? <clears throat> so I took a look at the board already before I, you know, turn my camera on and I found an issue. So right now I'm in ohms mode, black probe on ground, red probe doing the measuring. Okay, so that's less than one ohm, but I, I think that that's ground, so that's okay. Now here's where we have an issue. <clears throat> both sides shouldn't be under one ohm because both sides are in ground. So right now, because I have both sides are, you know, I mean, it's switching up now. But both sides are this low. Really, they're they were both they're less they're both less than all. Okay, cool. I have a this is a short because it's not supposed to be like this. You know? So something that I learned from last time I was working on the PS5 is that this this these little components right here that are shorted are connected here. So these are also let me switch it around. So these are also on that same, in that same circuit, I guess you can say, or on that same rail. So like when we measure this in, in uh, ohms mode, same deal. For the most part, my, my multimeter is just faulty, but for the most part, both of these both sides are less than all so that means we have a short circuit so today we'll go over finding the short circuit you know we're gonna we're gonna go over how do you find a short circuit what it will not necessarily find a short circuit we're gonna what we're going to do today is we're going to find a component that's causing the short take it off and replace it that way our ps5 can work uh, you know as it's supposed to <clears throat> okay cool so this is also in that circuit. I'm just doing this to show you guys because this is the one I'm gonna take off and this is where I'm gonna inject power at. So I just wanna show you guys that this is connected. So like I said, my multimeter is faulty, but that's low, it's not, that's not six ohms. That's less than six ohms. And then this side is a uh, ground. So that's definitely less than an ohm. So what you wanna do is we want to we're gonna end up taking this one off. That's what you're gonna do. We're gonna end up taking this one off. Because we want the removal process of this capacitor to be as easy as possible, we're gonna add flux and low melt solder onto the pins. And after that, we're gonna go ahead and add heat. So we can pull it off. So there's my little mouth solder. Here's that heat. It's okay if the plastic underneath burns a little bit, just because I want a big enough space where I can, um, what is it called, where I can inject power. I want a big enough pad or trace on the board. And like I said, if that plastic underneath the capacitor melts, it'll still work how it's supposed to. So you can always go ahead and put it back on the board, no problem. Got 
got that cap off. Okay, so I got some cables right here and I connected those cables to my power supply. And this is what's gonna allow me to inject power into the board on that rail that's causing the short. So you wanna go ahead and put black on black probe on ground. I'm sorry, the black, uh, it's like an alligator clip. You wanna go ahead and put that black alligator clip on ground. Now this red one is in the alligator clip. It's got some wire. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna solder this wire right here to the positive side. <clears throat> um, my fault, this is the positive side right here. And then we gonna send some power through there and pull out our, uh, so let's go ahead and do that. So let's go ahead and do that. So I just got a nice, you know, a nice size solder block on there. Here's my, uh, here's my thermal camera. I bought it on Amazon for like 300 bucks. I feel like I overpaid, but I mean, it, it does the job though. That's one thing. It's definitely helpful, especially when you have like a bigger board like this. For an iPhone, it still works, but I would still recommend maybe some free spray. That way you can see exactly, you know, which one is heating up. Because this one, if you're working on an iPhone, you may get like two or three components in the same place and they're all getting hot. And you don't know exactly which one it is because this one don't get that. This uh, this thermal camera is not is that precise. Though. Not for an iPhone. Turning my DC power supply on. <laughs> okay, turning my DC power supply on. Yeah. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do one volt, 2.5 amps. I think they say when you're injecting power, you wanna send the lowest voltage to the board. So like if the CPU runs off one volt, if you're gonna inject power, you wanna inject one volt. And then by adjusting the amperage, that'll determine how hot the component gets or not because that current um, that's flowing to ground through that component, that component that's, it's gonna cause that component to get hot. So that's why it's heating up, because there's a lot of current flowing through because it's like an alternative to ground without having to go through the whole load. If that makes a lot of uh, makes sense. Cool, so I just turn off DC power supply off. And we just wanna see what's heating up. So I don't know if you guys can see that, or I'm gonna show y'all, you see that? Whatever. Uh, I'm gonna tweet this out. Whatever this is right here, this area right here is heating up. It is getting to, what did I say on my? 51 degrees. Now, this could be something on the other on the other side of the board too. So this is 50 degrees, 47, max 50. Let me see if it's hotter on this side. Okay, so the max on this side is 36, which is not as hot on the other side as on the other side. So I know that that's shortest from one of these components on this side of the board. So I want to go ahead and use some alcohol and see what exactly gets hot over here. Because it's yeah, right here. Turn my DC power supply off. Also turned off my thermal camera. So I got I got a. The good thing is, and this is where free spray will probably come in handy, but I, I at least got a general idea of where to look. 
you know, sometimes that's all you need. I got a general idea of where I need to look to find this short. Or remove this short, I should say. I don't want to find it, I want to remove it. So I now know that this is the general area of the short. And because I know that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to one by one. One by one, I'm going to remove components in this area. One by one, I'm going to remove components in this area until the short goes away. And once the short goes away, I'll know, okay, it was that component, that's what we need to replace. First component. This is a capacitor. Check that short again. So you see how the you see how the amount of ohms went up. So I know first it was close to like six ohms. It was really under one, but my multimeter is, is probably could be better. But once we remove that capacitor, it went up to 29,000 ohms. So now we know that this is the positive side for sure because we can see the difference as opposed to this, the ground, which is still ground. You see that? Before we had two that looked like ground. We had this one that was ground and then we had this one that looked like ground because this component was shorted here and it was allowing all of that current to go to ground even though it shouldn't have. So now we can say, okay, cool, we removed the short. I'm gonna touch right here too, it wouldn't matter, but so this is ground, this is the positive side, thousands of ohms. Okay, cool, so we removed that short. I'm gonna go ahead and put this capacitor back on. Now that's small, this little small capacitor that we just took off right here, I'm not gonna replace that um, just because it is still, the, the PS5 will still work without that, that small capacitor, which is, you know, is a good thing. So we don't need to go ahead and replace that one. We should, you know, we should, it works just fine without it. Like I said, my multimeter be acting up. 
So that's how you move a short on the PS5 circuit board. I don't have the actual housing for the PS5 to put it together and show you guys that it works, but I will take a picture when I get to work just to show you that it comes up. Um, yeah, yep, yep. And like I said, you guys can leave that capacitor off. You don't have to go ahead and replace that one. Hey, if you like the video, like, comment, and subscribe. You guys have a good rest of your day. Hey, so here's that PS5 for no power. Went ahead and removed that short circuit. And now it's powering on. See if I can go ahead and turn it off now. Yep. <clears throat> nice.